Hey everyone, my name is David Rao and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Pinterest, on Twitter, um, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. I'm so excited you uh, have come along to uh, spend a little bit of time on this Monday night talking about music education. I love getting together with other, mu other music teachers and talking about uh, lessons and sharing ideas, and so that's what I hope we're going to um, get to do a little bit of tonight. Uh, the plan for tonight, I'm going to share all my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons for the week in a little bit. I'm going to do a quick, uh, I'm going to do a, a deep dive, a focus on um, ukulele in fourth and fifth grade. I also want to share just a little bit about um, uh, my bulletin boards because I've been sharing every week um, another bulletin board thing you can do to sort of get um, parents and teachers and students a little bit more engaged and I'm going to share um, a quick substitute lesson idea um, with y'all um, that you might want to use for your upper grades. Um, before I do that, um, if you have any questions or comments along the way, please leave those in the comments or send me a message or do something. Um, it's great if, you, if you're if you watching this live, if you leave a comment, other people sometimes comment back or um, I can sometimes catch that comment and see it and, and respond uh, from the video. Not, not always, but sometimes. Um, but if I don't get to answer it during the time of the video, I will definitely go back and, and answer it as soon as I can afterwards. Um, and if you're watching later, it's sometimes nice to see those comments and see things as they come in. So if you have comments or questions, please leave those. There's also links if I ever talk about something, you're like, hey, I wonder where he got that. Um, I have a links page on my blog. Um, in Facebook, it is linked to the bottom of the, the uh, caption for this video. And on Instagram, it's on my link in bio. And you can click that. And it's Musical Mondays Recap 2019-2020. You can see all the links and things that I'm talking about in this specific video. Okay. That out of the way, let's get to lessons. Let's get um, talking. So uh, before I do anything, I want to talk a little bit about bulletin board and then substitute teacher lesson, and then I'll jump into my lessons for the week. So every week I've been talking about a different bulletin board thing you could do. Uh, two weeks ago I talked about uh, Best of the Best, which is a celebration of um, black musicians, um, African-American musicians from all across the spectrum, pop music, um, contemporary music, uh, opera, musical theater, all sorts of stuff, giving um, profiles, information about each person. Um, and that's a, a quick and easy bulletin board you can put up any time of year for Black History Month, but it, it just highlights those people and their contributions to music history. So that's a, a really fun one you could do that could connect really well in February or really any time of year. Uh, last week I talked about um, a bulletin board I did called Legends of Jazz, and it'd be great for April, which is Jazz Appreciate appreciation month or you know any other time uh, during the school year that you want to highlight jazz if you have a jazz ensemble coming to your school if you know that there are people um, you know your the high school jazz band wants to come through or whatever it'd be a great chance to put that out in the hallway the one I want to talk about this week is just sort of a, a general advocacy a bulletin board I know music in our schools month is coming up um, and it's you know any time of the year it's like you know, if you have a blank bulletin board, you don't have a concert coming up you can advertise for, you don't have a specific thing, like what do you do? And so um, this is one that has worked really well in my school um, and just as a fun general advocacy thing that you can do. And, and I, I like talking about bulletin boards because even if you are completely wiped out and tired and you know have to go home and there's an event coming, the bulletin board can be there and can be happy and exciting for you and stand in as an advocate for you even if you're not physically there or even if you're just really tired and, and are having a tough time. This helps people connect and understand why music is important. So um, this, this whole set is called Music Matters and it's just quotes in little quote bubbles. So this one says, one good thing about music is when it hits you, you feel no pain. That's Bob Marley. Um, let's see. Oh, what's another good one? Um, okay, I think music in itself is healing. It's an explosive expression of humanity. It's something we are all touched by no matter what culture we're from. Everyone loves music. That's Billy Joel. Um, Music expresses that which cannot be said and on which it is impossible to be silent. Victor Hugo. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's another one. Rock and roll music, if you like it, if you feel it, you can't help but move to it. That's what happens to me. I can't help it. That's Elvis Presley. So each of these is sort of a, a speech bubble, a quote bubble. And what I really like are the blue ones because they look a lot like like iMessage bubbles or text bubbles or um, things that kids see a lot in like graphic novels. And so it's really fun for kids and adults to see these, um, the blue and the green especially because those look a lot like what you might see on an iPhone. And so they really catch people's eye. They're short, they're simple, and it's a lot of names that people know like 
<clears throat> Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, Plato, um, Nietzsche, Victor Hugo, uh, those are all old or older people, Maya Angelou, Albus Dumbledore, uh, Music and Magic Beyond All We Do Here, love that one, uh, Taylor Swift, Ella Fitzgerald, Marilyn Manson, Bono. So it's it's all these different um, expressions or d different people in bright colors. Um, it really catches kids' eye. And because it is those text bubbles, they like, get excited about it and they love to read it. So it's fun to put those out in the hallway because it's a great advocacy for any time of year. People love reading who's saying it. They love making the connection and sort of seeing what those people are saying. Um, and it's just it's a simple way to get people thinking about music and thinking about the power of music and what music can do for them. So um, super fun one to put out in the hallway. It's called Music Matters, and I put a link to that if you wanted to just get it for yourself. But anything like that is really simple, too, just to come up with fun quotes that, that um, are, are you know great for advocacy that help people connect. Always a good thing to have in the hallway. Okay, I wanted to talk also about a substitute teacher lesson. So um, the past week, to, uh, two weeks, um, every day during my plan period, I grab my phone and I take just a few minutes to talk about substitute teacher lessons, organization, other substitute ideas. And I've been sharing those in my Instagram stories. And they've also been pushing out to my Facebook stories. So if you if follow me on my Facebook page or on Instagram, you can see those stories. Um, on Facebook, they go away after 24 hours. On Instagram, I have have all of them saved in my highlights under sub plans or sub plans too. Um, you can only save so many stories and highlights. So, um, but every day I'm giving lesson ideas. Um, I'm giving organizational tips, things like that. And one of them, the one I shared today, I wanted to bring out and share with y'all because um, I feel like it's harder for me to write lesson plans for older grades. And so this is one that is like always a hit with older grades. If I don't get to it in class, like with my lessons, um, the sub can carry it out pretty easily, uh, especially if they're a music sub. So um, this is something you probably want to do after you've taught the treble clef. Um, but it's a, a super fun little lesson. And so it's just EGBDF stories. And if you get the resource that comes with this little thing, it's like teacher guide and has all the resources and things. But what I wanted to do, and this is why I think it's helpful for a sub, is it has lesson notes. I mean, this could be for you too, but lesson notes, this is really nice for a sub so they can sort of see what the student is supposed to do. Um, and it gives information about the kit and everything that's in there. So basically what the student does is the student has to come up with a sentence or an idea or something that goes with the E, G, B, D, F. They have to turn this sort of into a sentence. Then they write a story, draw a picture that, that matches that. If um, they don't want to do the picture or if their story is really long, there's a second page with just lines for writing the story. So in the kit, I have an example. Um, and the example is elderly grandma's baked delicious food. Here's the elderly grandma baking something delicious. This is something I did. And then the story says grandma's baked the tastiest treats. They know how to make chocolate chip pancakes, sugar cookies with frosting, apple crisp, homemade ice cream, and chocolate cake with chocolate frosting. And then it goes on, it goes on, goes on, and, and gives the example. Here's another one. Um, this one is electric gorillas beat down flowers. No one knows how the electric gorillas got out. They had been safely contained in the electric animal zoo. Maybe a lock broke, or maybe a sneaky villain let them out. We may never know how or why they were released, but we do know that they immediately headed for the Main Street flower shop. Those poor orchids and roses never stood a chance. The newspaper headline read, Electric Gorillas Beat Down Flowers. So the, then there's a little picture. So these are examples that are in there so that the kids can like look and see exactly like what they're supposed to make. My kids usually have a field day with this and they love being able to come up with their own stories. Some of them get a little bit caught up. Like maybe they, maybe that first word, like every single group will do every. Because <laughs> somehow that's the easiest for them. Um, or there's that one kid who does, who like takes piano and he's like, I already know what we're going to do. Well, um, I let each kid sort of do their own thing. Uh, they create their own story. You could have them do it in groups of two or groups of three if you wanted. Um, but then I also made this long list. And so there are nouns for each letter. Um, e, eggs, eagles, echidna, earwax, eels, earthquake. So the kids have ideas if they want to substitute out one of the other words or descriptive words. E, G, B, D, N, F, descriptive words. E, G, B, D, N, F, verbs. And this is sort of helpful as like a little word bank so that as kids are going along and creating, if they're like, mm, 
Um, let's see. Energetic green baboons. Yes. And what are the baboons doing? Energetic green baboons decipher. Ooh. And so it's like, it gives them some ideas so they're not just ending up with every good whatever, every good whatever, every great whatever, because that always seems to happen. Um, but it gives them sort of ideas of what they could do. And then also, if you want, after you're finished, there are a couple things you can do with it. They can just turn it and be done. Um, there's ideas about how you can turn it into a bulletin board if you want. Um, and then what I like to do, um, if I do it in class, I spend time with kids um, writing and doing it. And that's a great, someone said on Instagram, an extended writing activity because every school is like, how are you including writing? Well, this is a way to do it in a little bit more authentic way. But if I've spent the time to do it with the class, I take all of their examples and I like to bind it up in a little book. And this comes in the kit too, um, our favorite EGBDF stories. And so it, what the kids get then is I, I put them all together, I bind them, I give one to each homeroom of the grade level that did it, I put one in the school library, I give one to my administrators to look at, um, and if I'm just making copies it's not too hard to do that. But anyway, so here's some fun examples. Epic giraffes bake disgusting fudge. Okay, I love that one. Let's see. Um, okay. Engineering goats bouncing down Florida. I don't know exactly how that happens, but all right, let's see. Uh, oh, another energetic. Energetic greedy bears uh, deliver fish. <laughs> so it's just fun to see what they come up with. And then I like um, when I bind them together, um, I also bind them so it's like um, Miss Bennett's class. And then in the same book is, oh, if I can get to the next header. Um, this is Garcia's class. And then I, so each, each group has their own, so then the kids can easily find their story. Uh, Mr. Van Ramen's class. They can find their own story, but then also if they want to read someone else's story, they can do that. So if you give one to each homeroom teacher, it's so fun to see other kids reading other kids' stories. If you put it up as a bulletin board, it's fun to see them going through and reading that. But I mean, just like, there are some hilarious stories that kids come up with. Effortless, effortless giants bake dull food. Evil guys become dangerous forever. I mean, there's some excited giant butterflies daintily flutter. Oh, that was a good one. I remember that one. So it's just fun to see what they come up with. It's great to put in a sub lesson. And because it has sort of the, the examples and the ideas, subs can usually do that. And subs, a lot of my subs would rather do a writing activity than an activity where they have to sing. Because I, they just are intimidated by that and so giving them something that they can work with is a great thing and that's great for three four five it's great for if they're going to have a sub for more than one day or if something's happening it's it's fun to just be able to put there and give to them so i put a link to that too if you want to learn more um, about all the resources in that kit okay so bulletin board sub lesson if you want more sub ideas Check me out on Instagram, um, Make Moments Matter Music Ed, or you can search my name, David Rao. And every day I'm giving more substitute teacher lesson ideas, and there are a ton of things stored in the highlights. Um, and the highlights, if you're not an Instagram person, are um, like right below the profile, there are these little bubbles, and they have all, all the archived um, Instagram stories. Stories go away after 24 hours, but anything you save in the highlights will stay um, forever. But anyway, so they're there if you want them, but I'm also, it also posts to Facebook. So if you check, check Facebook once a day or something, check in and see a lot of those stories will show up. I'm hoping to put a bunch of these sub ideas in a blog post, but for now they're living on Instagram. So if you want more ideas, more are coming. Okay, great, we're doing great. So um, I, I wanna spend a little bit of time with ukulele. So I'm gonna quick breeze through my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons and then share more about ukulele. And if you have ideas, I'd love to hear them when we get there. Um, but but we'll get to that. So um, here are the kindergarten lessons that I'm teaching this week. And because of my wonky seven day schedule, um, I'm teaching them. And, and then next week I have off from school. So these lessons that I started last Friday, I will not have a new set of lessons until two weeks from tomorrow. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's just my schedule and the way, how, way it works. Anyway, um, the kindergarten homeroom teachers do a performance every February I am not in charge of it. I help out by doing the sound, but I am not in charge of it, which is nice because it means that I don't have to do a kindergarten performance. So all year long kindergarten is just learning, we're experiencing, we're doing 
all the preparatory things that I've always wanted to do when I was at a school that had to do a kindergarten performance. I'm like, oh, I wish I had that time back. Well, I have that time back now. So um, I, I love all year long. I don't have to worry about stressing about going, getting ready for a program. We're just experiencing and doing. Well, this is the week of the program. So all of my lessons for kindergarten this week are all shot because during specials is when the kindergarten team practices. So all week long, instead of having students come to my room, uh, they're in the gym and I'm helping, you know, get microphones and run sound and whatever. Um, but that's all something I don't have to do. There's always like one or two days that like fall out of the scope of practice week. And so basically what those classes are gonna do, I'm just pulling highlights from the semester before or from the few weeks before, and we're taking them and redoing things that we were weak on, um, bringing back things that kids love, like the songs and games they love, and just doing a little bit more expanding on, oh, what else could we add here? Ooh, let's add an instrument part here. Let's do a part B here. Let's come up with a little poem. Let's do a movement part to this. So it's just like taking the lessons and things we've already done and adding more because they're just like out of the rotation. So I don't want to teach anything like new that they, they won't that some kids won't get so it's only usually like one class in the rotation of seven that would get that but I have a few like alternate plan ideas just in case first grade is preparing for a program um, we've sort of been just learning lots of different things and as soon as um, February break is over because next week all week is like our winter break we're on a balanced calendar that means we started with students on August 1st and we'll have them through basically the end of May but every six or seven weeks we get a full week off well next week is our full week off and so um, after that break is basically when I'm like hey we have a concert it isn't like two weeks let's get going so right now I'm sort of like pulling all these songs that we've already sort of done and refreshing and reminding and adding a little bit more. We've been doing a lot of animal songs and the kids are like, oh, animal songs, great. It's gonna be a zoo program. So we're sort of slightly shifting and changing everything now so that when they come back, I'll be like, hey, we have a zoo concert coming up, how exciting. And all the songs we've already learned are the songs we're gonna be in the program. Um, so anyway, so the songs we're doing in this lesson are a culmination of that or changing to things that we've already learned to make them more zoo themed. So we do One Elephant Went Out to Play on a spider web one day. Um, that's a fun little song and we're going to incorporate that with a little bit of movement into the concert. We do um, Hunt the Cows. So in the last several weeks we've been doing um, Hunt the Cows and it goes for like... <laughs> Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and hunt the cattle. Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and hunt the cows. And then the kids get to go, the cows are lost. The sun is warm. I think I'll wait till they come home. And I got a fun idea from Lynn Kleiner's book. I think it's called Farm Sounds. And like a little movement thing that they can do with that. In this lesson, we, we've learned that the past several weeks, we did the singing part, the kids are doing um, singing back to me, and the kids are, you know, they're doing all the movement, and they, they know how, they've got it down. Well, in this week I say, what if it weren't a cowboy looking for cows? What if it were um, a zookeeper? What if it were a zookeeper and something else had gotten out? Hmm, and I stand at the, at the whiteboard and I say, what else could maybe have gotten out? Let's see, and we write down less. We write down ideas of things that could have gotten out at a zoo. I come up with five ideas, and or I don't come up. Well, I let the kids come up with five ideas. I write all five down, and then I say, "Okay, great. You do the exact same thing, but I'm, I'm going to change the word cows to your first word, the one you came up monkeys. That's what I'm going to come up with." So then I, I, you know, I play my little thing and they do the same actions they've always done. Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and hunt the monkeys. Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and hunt the monkeys. And they go, the monkeys are lost. The sun is warm. I think I'll wait till they come home. And they get to do basically the exact same thing they've learned just with monkeys, right? Easy peasy. And then I say, great, okay, the next one is... Mm, salamanders or I don't know what elephants kids wouldn't say salamanders elephants great you know what I wonder do you think one of you or maybe I know and I, I divide up the class in a half and one half I say you are senior zookeepers and the other half I say you are junior zookeepers junior zookeepers we've caught you taking a nap go ahead take a nap and they they become the sleepy heads the other group gets to sing what I have been singing for the last several weeks. Wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and hunt the 
whatever. Uh, elephants, wake up, you sleepy heads, and go and hunt the elephants. And then the class, the junior zookeepers, they wake up. So for two animals that we've come up with, I let one half of the class be the the senior zookeepers waking up the sleepy heads. The other half are like, oh, and then we switch. So basically I'm doing this so that when we get to the concert, one one or two classes can be like the senior zookeepers, like, why are, why are you asleep? There are animals out. And the other ones can be the silly ones who like wake up in the middle of the concert. It's it's basically just taking what we've already been doing in class as a classroom game and turning it into something we can share with parents. Um, and it's a tiny little tweak, just changing a little bit of the setting and giving the kid, giving half of the kids like the teacher part because they know it, and um, coming up using their zoo animal ideas as the the things that get out and the things get lost. So we're using their ideas. They're the ones taking ownership of how the form and how it works. And, and hopefully it'll turn out to be really cool. It was super cool to see them do it in class. It was very, very, very fun to see them do it. And they were, they loved it. They loved being the senior and junior zookeepers. They thought that was hilarious. So it was just a simple little switch to make that a little bit different. And then we do another song from Lynn Kleiner, Go Into the Jungle Today. We're at the point now where the kids can sing the kids can move, the kids can stop for the verses that are spoken word poetry, and they're doing great, but it's just taken like a little bit every week, like I teach them the verse one week, Ooh, or sorry, I teach them the chorus the first week. Then we do a little bit of movement, then we add in a chorus, then we add in another spoken thing, then we, and we're more expressive, we do it a little bit more every time. And so uh, by now they're like performance level great, it's just taking a little bit every week and adding more and more. And that's in Lynn Kleiner's book, Jungle Beats. I think that's what it is called. <laughs> I don't remember. A lot of her books are like Jungle Sounds or Jungle Beats or I, I can I always mess them up in my head. I'm like, is it is it Ocean Beats? Ocean Sounds? Ocean a Song? Ocean Song? I can't remember. Anyway, it's on the links page, so if you're if you're interested. Um, she has a lot of great songs that are perfect for, I think, primary grades especially, but are just fun if you want to like pull them and, and, and shine them up a little bit for a concert. Then we do Matilda the Gorilla. They know this song from kindergarten. I had a pet gorilla. Her name, it was Matilda. Matilda likes to sing songs every day. And this is what Matilda the Gorilla would say. Ooh, 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 ah, ah, ah. And so it's a cute little song. Um, it's been pop. I don't know exactly where it first started. It's a fun, cute little song. Um, but in the, the original song, the circus man comes along and says, Matilda, I know where you belong, but we're just changing that word to zookeeper. So hooray, right in the theme. But it's a song they've already sort of learned, so I don't have to take time out of class to teach it to them um, again or for, you know, just for the concert. Well, we did it last year to reinforce steady beat because last year when we learned it, I would sing the verses and they would keep the steady beat and then they would, then they would sing the chorus. That was sort of the purpose of the song. Now we're bringing it back. They're learning some of the verses uh, they're going to get to sing and do it. So I'm going to have every homeroom um, do one of the verses, and then we'll put it all together. A super fun, simple song. And then I have um, down at the bottom, at the bottom of my notes, you might remember I have this little box that says like notes and extensions. Well, the notes and extensions I have like, if you get through this lesson faster than you think you will, because sometimes that happens. Here are other next step songs that probably you should look at. Or here's another one that like, you haven't done it in a little while and you're gonna to need to bring it back for the concert. So like, if you end up with extra time, which usually doesn't happen, but if you end up with extra time, here's what you could do. I remember my first couple years teaching, I did end up with extra time. And I think it was because I was not scaffolding correctly in my lessons. I was maybe not as good at, at teaching the, the content. And so I'd end up with like extra five minutes. Like how did we get through the lesson so fast? Well, that doesn't happen so much anymore. I'm better at pacing, I'm better at scaffolding, but, I still keep those things in, in my mind because I just know myself and I know that like if I end up with a five extra minutes, I'll have a little bit of a panic attack. <laughs> Not really, a bit of a little bit of like, uh, and like my natural instinct is like, uh, what have we already done? And so to have this here at the bottom of like, you should do this next. Um, it really helps me. It helps me know with planning. And if I don't get it to it in this lesson, it lets me know like this should be in the next lesson. This is how you should plant it in. Okay, second grade, um, we are also planning for a concert, an Around the World concert, um, and sort of uh, bringing in songs and games and things from different continents, a little bit um, different places around the world. 
um, our beginning poem we did Bate Bate Chocolate and for the last three weeks um, I sort of to, to center the, the poem in, store, in a story we've been talking about um, our abuela in Mexico our grandma in Mexico and how she's going to make us hot chocolate if we ask nicely and so the, one of the things I've been saying to kids is if you go bate bate chocolate bate bate chocolate no one's going to make you hot chocolate if you say it like that they are not compelled to do that. But if you say, bate, bate, chocolate, bate, bate, chocolate, if you're more, if you're more inspired with your speaking, if you're a little bit more, um, you know, energized and excited, probably you'll get hot chocolate a little bit, uh, probably more, more likelihood. Well, so that's what we've been talking about in the last three weeks. And we sort of made it about hot chocolate. And the, the words we used were bate, bate, chocolate, bate, bate, chocolate, bate, bate, chocolate, bate, bate, chocolate. And there's a little uno, dos, tres, cho, uno, dos, tres, co, uno, dos, tres, la, uno, dos, tres, te. That's sort of how the whole thing goes. Well, there's another version of bate, bate, chocolate that's about not about hot chocolate. It's about mole sauce. And mole is like tomato sort of base sauce, I think, with chocolate and some spice and some other things. But it, there's chocolate in the sauce. And so the, the poem version of that is bate, bate, chocolate, con arroz y con tomate which is con with with rice and with tomato and at first the kids are like what so i i always have a picture like ready to go up on the screen of like sort of a dark sauce with a little bit of rice on the side over some sort of chicken or something i found it online um with a recipe about mole but it it it's obvious that like it doesn't look gross because <laughs> the kids are like chocolate sauce like it, it looks good and this, so they're like mm, okay and there's always like one or two kids who are like I've had mole it's good like it's it's good <laughs> so it's fun to have that reinforcement but we changed um, just the basic bate bate chocolate to one about mole which means the, now the words are bate bate chocolate con arroz y con tomate bate bate chocolate con arroz y con tomate and again all the rules apply of you need to have your words more interesting more exciting so that um, you can actually get some mole anyway so that's sort of how we start out our lesson and I see Jennifer asks how long are your classes 45 minutes I have students for 45 minutes once every seven school days not enough time. So in the last lesson, we learned Frere Jaca, sort of. Uh, we learned the English version. We, we, we started into the French version, and we sort of got it. The Fr I mean, the, it's only French for one verse, so it's very simple. Um, it's only four phrases. So I always get nervous when I'm teaching them a foreign language like this, but it actually was not too bad. And I found a video that the kids really like. And so... Uh, and I put that on the links page, but basically what I'm doing in class is I'm teaching, um, I'm singing where I sing and they echo, I sing, they echo, I sing, they echo, because and the nice thing is that it's like repeated, each phrase is repeated, right? So like I can sing it, they can sing it, I can sing it, they can sing it as, as we go. And then eventually I'll take my part out and they'll just sing it twice. Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques, dormez-vous, dormez-vous. And so the, the, um, the nice thing about it is, um, you know, we learn it, we, we learn the English, then we speak the French, then we sing the French. And then we did that in the last lesson. So we do that again, just to reacquaint them. And then I found this video where they can watch and see someone else singing it. And I love that for a couple of reasons, because it reinforces, it's something I can send to their homeroom teachers and say, could you play this at the beginning of the day, just to like refresh in their head. Um, one of the other things I like about this video, it means that I mean, I'm not a French speaker, and so I am not super consistent with my pronunciation as much as I would like to be, especially because <laughs> since um, my one of my New Year's resolutions is brush up on your Spanish. And so I've been doing Duolingo every day, and I feel like, all right, my Spanish. And then here I am trying to do French, and I'm like, ooh, I... I said, I said that like it's Spanish or like my, like I'll pronounce things weird. So anyway, so it's nice that the video's there so they can hear French speakers and they can hear it a little bit cleaner and then they can sing with that. So usually the first time I show a video, the kids are just like entranced in it and excited about it. So they don't sing along. And so I show the video 
once, twice if we have time. So the first time they can watch, they can hear, they can experience. And then the second time, if they're ready, they can sing along. And if not, they can hear and experience. And like I said, I'm gonna give this video to their homeroom teachers with the hopes that the homeroom teacher will play it at some point and they'll get more um, experience with that. Um, we've been doing Arirang, which is a Korean, Arirang, sorry, which is a Korean folk song. Um, it's, it's like on the UNESCO World Heritage list of um, non-physical things that should be kept around. It's this beautiful song, very, very, very old. And they, sa they said, um, and this was, I heard more about this. I went to a great session at the um, American North Shulvik Association National Conference this year um, about Korean music and about um, the presenter, Natasha Thurman, talked a little bit about Arirang, especially. There are like 6,000 variants of 60 different versions that all use the word Arirang. And um, if you look up Arirang online, there's like a news service that's like Arirang News. Anyway, um, there's, it's, it's so, so all that to say, there are a ton of different versions. There are some that are slightly more popular than others. And when I wanted to um, incorporate a goodbye song um, a year or two ago, I was looking for fun folk songs that I could pull in that are like goodbye songs or songs that are slower, or songs that would help kids focus in. And I, I found this song, I didn't know about it before. And so at the end of every class, I've been singing a version of Arirang to my students. So now that we're getting ready for our program, all I have to do is sort of reinforce the correct words. They've heard the melody a ton of times and they've heard me sing it so they know um, how it goes. So what I do in this lesson is I teach them the words um, of the version that we're gonna sing um, and it's it's sort of a goodbye, sort of a song, so it's gonna go towards the end of our program. Um, and then we watch, um, there's a YouTube video, and it's not actually anyone there, it's just a recording that's been put on YouTube so they can like see the words and they can hear someone singing it in Korean. We are not going to attempt singing it in Korean. I thought about it. It's, it's gonna if I can't if I'm gonna mess up the French, I'm, I know that the Korean would not be great. So what what I'm hoping to do is um, they're gonna hear the Korean, and we'll have a recording for the concert where they'll there will be Korean, and then we'll sing. There will be an interlude where we'll sing. Um, our version, which is sort of a modified English version. So um, what we're gonna do, uh, we watch the video where we hear the native speakers singing. They can actually see the characters, which are the, you know, the non-Arabic letter characters um, up on the screen, which they love. They think that's so fascinating. Um, and then what, what I wanna show them is there's another video, and I posted this on the links page, of um, a, cult, a cultural arts association in the United States that's doing a dance inspired by Arirang. And what I'm hoping to do with my kids is do a dance inspired by Arirang. There are a ton of videos of like fan dancing and cool stuff on YouTube, but I don't want to take those dances and like try and recreate them with my suburban Atlanta kids. Like that just feels inauthentic. And that that's not our culture, that's not our story but we can be inspired by the story and I can give them a chance to improvise movement or create movement or do things that would match the feeling of the song or their understanding of the song. We can be inspired by this song that's been around for hundreds of years um, without parroting actions that are actually part of the culture, if that makes sense. So that's what my plan is. And so in this lesson, we reinforce the English version words of the song. We listen to the Korean language song. If we have a chance, we watch the video of the cultural dancers who are doing a dance inspired by Ari Rong. And then in the next lesson, we'll get a little bit of a chance to explore and do some of that movement on our own. Hope that makes sense. Not exactly sure how this one's gonna turn out, but I'm really, I'm, I think it's gonna be really cool if we can do it, so. I'm excited to see how that goes. And then we've been piecing together every week, um, Eyes the Buy That Built the Boat from Newfoundland in Canada, and we are gonna, we put that all together in this lesson. We also do a quick dance of La Raspa, which is um, a dance inspired by a Mexican folk song, um, and that goes in this lesson too. And another thing, so I've, I've talked about this before, but when I do my lesson plans, um, if there's a song I'm not as familiar with, I put it like, in my lesson book with the lesson plan. So like if I flip, if I'm like, oh gosh, I'm doing that song, flip page from my lesson plan to here's the notation of the song. And so here's Ari Rong right here. 
uh, the the text and the music came from Beth's notes, Beth's music notes, the website, um, along with the translation. Um, and this is so helpful and handy to have right there in case I'm like, Ugh, how does that melody go? Even though I've sung it like every time for a closing song, you forget. So it's nice to just have that right there. Uh, third grade, we're building on our, our previous lesson. So they come in, we do a little bit of soul fetch, we do a little bit of body percussion, some echoing. Um, we go to the Note Neighborhood. And like I I've shared about Note Neighborhood before, but with every Note Neighborhood story, like um, there's like meet the half, meet sassy half note. And then in each that in each story, there's like meet sassy half note. And then there's a secondary PowerPoint that's like practice the half note. So in one whole PowerPoint, they like meet her, they learn it, they, they learn how the half note works, blah, blah, blah. And then there's another PowerPoint included in the same bundle that has like practice that concept. And there's one for like quarter notes. So it's like learn it, practice it. And there's another one for 16th note, learn it, practice it. So my students have learned 16th notes and now we're doing the practice PowerPoint, which is like at the food truck festival. And oh no, another food truck showed up. We better read that whole line of rhythms. Like, so it's, uh, you know, as characters show up, we read and do more. But this is the one where it's like, we take the, the 16th notes and we reinforce it by reading it again. And it's just like a another way that like the characters of the note neighborhood can um, you can get a little bit more practice with them. So we do that. That takes about five, ten minutes of reading, practicing, remembering, going through before we jump to our song for the day. But it's just a quick and easy thing to do. It gets them thinking about it again. And it's, it's a fun, they like the Note Neighborhood. Like they, it's silly how much they like it. But when we go to the food truck festival, they're like, I've been to a food truck. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. We can, oh, that looks just like the food truck I had when I went to the blah, 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 blah. So like, Anyway, hilarious. They like the content. They like the story. It makes me laugh. Um, Sansa Chroma is what we did last week. And I talked about that um, in last week's video. Um, I have a favorite folk song set for it to give kids a little bit more context about where the song comes from. It comes from Ghana, um, from the Akan people who live in Ghana and Ivory Coast. It has this fun, cool story behind it. And what we did in the previous lesson was we took egg shakers. Well, we learned the song, we learned it phrase, phrase by phrase, and then to add in, the students had to come, in small groups, they had to come up with um, three beat phrases, it's actually four beat, four beat with a break, um, that they could do along to the song. So the song was, Sansa Kroma Nine Wo Acheche Kokoma, Sansa Kroma Nine Wo Acheche Kokoma. So something the students might have come up with might have been like, Sansa Kroma Nine Wo Acheche Kokoma, Sansa Kroma Nine Wo Acheche Kokoma, or they might have done Sansa Kroma Nine Wo Acheche Kokoma, Sansa Kroma Nine Wo Acheche Kokoma. Basically, I was asking them in a small group to come up with a little ostinato pattern that would go along with the song. In this lesson, that pattern has to incorporate some sort of passing. That's why I didn't have them do four beat patterns. Sansa kroma nine wo acheche kokoma. Or sansa kroma nine wo acheche kokoma. Sansa kroma nine wo acheche kokoma. Every one that I modeled, every one that they did had a little rest in there that we just didn't really talk about. Sansa kroma rest. No acheche koko rest. Sansa kroma rest. No acheche koko rest. There's always a rest built in because I wanted them to do that in last week's lesson because in this lesson, if there has to be some element of passing, they need a beat to either pass the egg grab the new egg, whatever. So in last week's lesson, I was like setting that up so that now when they get to the passing part, they are ready to go. If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. That's why we're doing, it really could be a four beat ostinato, but I do three beats with a rest so that when they get here, um, they're ready to do it. The other thing is I pass out eggs um, in a, in the circle and I'm trying really mix up the, the egg color. So I have these Latin percussion eggs. It comes in six different colors, uh, red, yellow, blue, pink, purple, and green. And I try and really mix them up. So they're all spread out and around as we're just learning as a whole group, every kid just has whatever color they don't even care, you know, cause they're passing and changing the colors. And then when it's time to form small groups, I say, find the color of the egg that matches your egg. And that's,
that's your small group. And I really try and do it. So if like there are four boys who should not be together, they all have different colors. So they cannot be together. And oh no, the eggs chose. It's, you know, the way of the egg, you know, like whatever. But actually I'm being strategic and making sure that you don't, don't have eggs. There was even one time where I was like, oh, you have, you have red. And I knew that this kid's like best friend who he all, always gets in trouble with also had red. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give you blue. Um, let's trade. And we traded. And then about two minutes later, I was like, okay, find the person with color. And he was, and then he realized he's like, oh, I don't have <laughs> the red that my friend has. Anyway, it's just a way to organize your classroom so that you don't have kids together who should be, who should not be together. Okay. And so at the end of the class, the kids get to share with others what they've come up with, which is great. Number one, because it, it's a confidence boost. Um, it means that they ha they ha they are under the under the gun. They have to come up with something to be able to show. It also means that they are showing off their creative work, which is one of our national standards. Um, and and it, it gets them in the mindset of we got to do this, we got to work together so that we have something to show. And so it's always fun if you leave five minutes at the end of the class to have them show to the other kids what they've come up with. And almost almost all the time, if I walk through as they're creating, coming up with ideas, and just like help you know, solidify things. They almost can always come up with good ideas. Okay, we have just enough time to talk a little bit about fourth grade and fifth grade. So they're, they're doing similar things, just uh, fifth grade is a little bit more accelerated. Um, we're doing the ukulele unit, I guess, um, a little bit of ukulele. And um, so fourth grade is like brand new to it. They've never done it before. Fifth grade, we did it last year. So we're remembering things, we're brushing up on our skills, and we're, we're doing more. So I went to a workshop at GMEA, uh, Georgia Music Educators, a couple of weeks ago. That's my state conference, and Dr. Jill Reese was one of the speakers. She's so great. She's at um, State University of New York in Fredonia, and she has some amazing resources online, and um, I've linked to those. And her YouTube page is just fantastic. So she has all these fun play alongs, things that you can do along with, uh, but she also had some really great ideas to share. And so I've taken some of those ideas and sort of infused them into my lessons in really helpful ways. Um, so I'll just share just a couple things that, that have we've been working on. So fourth grade, we're up to like two chords, which is exciting, right? Um, but at the beginning of the lesson, um, we recap some of the things we've learned. We basically just, you know, we'll, we'll place down a C and we'll just practice strumming. And I find that if I take three minutes just to like, you know, I'll click a steady beat or whatever, and the kids just get a strum, um, it's, it's good for me to like filter around and check out like, are you doing down and up? No, you're not. You're just strumming down. Okay. And so like check in with individual kids. It helps me check to make sure they're actually holding it in the right place. A lot of kids will start doing things where like the, the neck of the ukulele will come up. I talk about having lazy elbow where they're, they're, the elbow that the, um, the fretboard hand is on will like land on their, their thigh. And that either pushes the ukulele forward or pushes it up, but it just messes up their posture. So I, I have this joke about, oh, lazy elbow. If you, if we find out you have lazy elbow, you'll have to, you know, go get a shot from the nurse or whatever, or, you know, have to, I don't know, you're going to have to go sit in the special lazy elbow spot, whatever. But it, it helps it making a joke about lazy elbow gets them to take their elbow off their leg. But anyway, if we, if we just spend time strumming in the first few minutes, it gives them a chance to sort of work out some of those things. Um, some of my kids are like, oh, my finger's hurting. I'm like, well, then you're strumming too hard. And so in these, these first few minutes, I can say like, ah, oh, relax, you know, just get the, just, you know, shake it out, relax, don't press so hard. If you're, if you're pressing really hard, then yeah, your finger's going to hurt. So we talk, we just talk about just strumming. We plan, spend lots of time just going up and down and doing patterns. And then I'll say, you know, turn my words into strums. Ta, 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 di, ta. And they have to go. Ta, di, ta, ta, di, ta. Ta, di, ta, di, ta, di, ta. So then it's not connected to any song. It's not connected to any specific activity. They're just taking the words and turning them into strumming patterns. And that's fun because then they can easily do that. And they're focused on the strumming and the down and up and the way they're strumming. That's important for them. 
So connected with that, another thing that I sometimes do, um, I have, I'm working on, this is something I'm working on for myself, my own classroom. Um, if it's helpful, I'll put it on Teachers Pay Teachers. But um, I'm coming up with like PowerPoints that are just rhythms, um, different, different combinations of rhythms that could be printed out for rhythm cards, I guess. But I'm using them in the classroom for lots of different things. So um, for some grades, it's just reading practice. Um, when fifth graders are switching over to reading by numbers instead of ta's and ta's and ta -dees, um, it's you know a chance for them to do one and two, three and four and instead of ta di ta ta di ta di. So I use it for that. Um, this week, what I've been doing with ukulele is I say read it, then play it. So they'll say ta di ta ta di ta di. Yeah, ta 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 di. So it gives them a chance to again not connect to a you know any song, not no pressure to switch chords, nothing like that. It's just practicing the strumming, figuring out how they can do up and down, down and up. Sometimes they'll even say like, someone pick the top line, someone pick the bottom line. We're going to play them at the same time. And that's fun to see what they come up with. But it's, this is right now, this is just really simple. Uh, rhythm is really very easy, but it gives them a chance to do, to do that with rhythms that they're able to, to handle. Okay, so that's just one real simple thing we do. That's all just strumming. Um, we, I, I put dots on my ukulele. I think you can do any color dot you want. Um, these are just really simple dots. I've shared about these before. Um, and this, you can get these like from Office Depot. You can use a paint pen, whatever. I think how you put on dots is up to you. Or if there's a method book you're using that, that encourages a certain way, use that pattern. But I would just say less dots are more. So just use the ones that you know you're going to use. And some people are like 75 dots. Like find the fuchsia ones. No, not the pink ones. The fuchsia ones. Nope, not the, you know, like it, it, for me, it's too tricky to put too many on. So I just put on a few different dots. But uh, we do the C chord right now. We're doing the F chord, which um, Dr. Reese talked about this thing. She's, she's like, we call it Hawaiian F. But it's just your first finger on the red dot, so that's uh, the second string from the bottom in the first uh, fret. So she puts her finger there and she calls that Hawaiian F. But it's just a, a regular F without your second finger. So we learn C, Hawaiian F, and regular F. And that's what we're working on switching between. What's really nice is when we do a play along, I can say, play everything you can play. If you can't play a regular F, play Hawaiian F for now. So it's, it's a really simple way to get kids playing more songs. Um, it's sort of a crutch into just a regular F, but it's, it's fun for um, kids to be able to do that. So in fourth grade, those are the chords we're doing. We're doing C, we're doing Hawaiian F and regular F. And um, then we get chances to, to play around and switch and go back and forth. Let me finish out this fourth grade bit and then I have a couple questions I see I'll answer. Um, so we do that, we do, um, sometimes I'll just play a steady beat or I'll just have a steady beat and students, I'll say, we're doing a C and you can do ta, 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 ta. or you can choose ta di ta di ta di ta di ta di ta or you can do a mix you could do ta 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 di ta di ta ta i don't care you get to choose and kids love that as long as you're doing c good now switch to hawaiian f or regular f or whatever it's it gives kids a chance to just keep the strumming while they're playing and doing some switching, going back and forth. Um, and then we'll do some play alongs and I'll show you a couple here in just a second. So let me see if I can pull them up. So with fourth grade, what we're doing, um, so Lime in the Coconut is really fun for them because um, it's the same chord for the whole song. It's C7, which they don't actually know, but I say like, oh, it's a fun little variation. So. You, know, you can either play C7, you can play C, but the whole thing is the same chord. And so what I have them do is just strum along to the beat. It's basically just another chance for them to practice strumming while we're learning a new song. They, they're like, oh, we're learning a new song. Well, yeah, but not really. You're just, <laughs> I'm tricking you into doing more strumming. Um, and that's an easy one to do. 
The one that I love to try with them is um, American Author's Best Day of My Life. And this one is great because it really only has two chords. There are a couple others snuck, snuck in there, but um, it has C and F. And I, again, I say, if you can't play regular F, play Hawaiian F. And they are able to do that. And then um, there's one more in there. There's A minor in there. But I don't really talk to them about that. If there are some kids who see it and can do it, great. But otherwise, it's just the C and the F. And that's very simple for kids. Um, even my beginner kiddos in fourth grade to be able to do. And those are the two play-alongs I've done so far with fourth grade. Let me answer a couple of questions then talk about fifth grade. One more thing. How many weeks in your ukulele unit usually? Um, I like to do it between coming back to school and uh, February break or maybe a couple weeks past that. And so that's the next few weeks. Um, someone just said, I do Lime in the Coconut. And the kids who can do C to C7 on a doctor. Oh, do doctor. Oh, interesting. Okay, it's a fun song to be able to do that. Let's see. How long are your class? 45 minutes. Uh, would you match strumming pattern to the beat down on a downbeat and up to an upbeat? Mm, I don't get that specific because right now I'm just letting kids choose what they feel like is comfortable. There's so many other things for them to think about that I don't stress out about that right now. But most kids are doing down strums, um, and I just like if they're doing down and up. So if they're able to do down and up strums, great. Uh, but I don't really stress too much about that right now, JP. Uh, do you teach classroom ukulele what grades learn? Fourth and fifth grade. And then um, in the classroom right now, and we're going to have an after-school ukulele club that'll start after our February break. Cool, that's all the questions so far. Let's get to fifth grade before we run out of time. And if you have more questions, I'll try and answer them. I am not a ukulele expert. I am just <laughs> sharing what I'm doing. I don't know if it's working so well or not, but I'm just sharing what I've got. Okay, one other thing that was really inspiring from Dr. Reese's presentation at GMEA was she talked about, um, I don't know if she called it the ukulele hotel, but I'm calling it the ukulele hotel. So she has them, uh, the kids think about the ukulele like it's a four-story building. There's the bottom floor, the second floor, the third floor, and the top floor. And that's the four strings going from bottom to top. So um, what I do have the kids do, I have dots marked on here for chord, for chord parts. But the first time I say, you know, put your thumb on the back and now uh, put your other four fingers on the bottom floor of the hotel and run them along the floor, finding different things, see if they can find find an elevator, take them up to the second floor, go across all the string, good, go up to the third floor, we explore the hotel, right? And then they say, oh no, I'm so glad the bellhops are here because we need a little bit of help. First, we need someone to park, um, park a car. Can you have the third bellhop, the third valet, park a car in the in the third space on the on the ground floor. What what space is that? What color is it? And they're like, oh, it's blue. Great, okay. Actually, someone needs a sandwich on the fourth floor in the second room. Can we send up the second bellhop up there to the, the fourth floor, second room? What color is that room? It's yellow. Oh, great, okay. Um, let's see, the first bellhop, can you send him up? Someone needs some toothpaste to the second floor, first room. And I'm just sent, I'm just having kids then, it's just getting them to think about where their fingers are going and get, it's like road signs for them to figure out where and, and what I can call out to have their fingers move to different places. So then later when I say, okay, second string, first fret or whatever, they get, I, I don't even say that right now, I'm saying second floor, first room or whatever when I'm calling out things later in the lesson, but they get it. Like they get that idea. My favorite is when I say, oh no, there's been a real emergency. Send whoever you want up to the third floor, fifth room, and they get to that one, which is right here. And they're like, there is no, there is no dot there, Mr. Route. I'm like, right, but someone left the water on and guess what? Between the fifth floor and this, or the third floor and the second floor in the fifth room, there is a water leaking through the floor. Do you see it? Because right there on the fretboard is a dot that the that comes with the ukulele, and it's in between the two strings. So I just have kids like see that so they can find that spot. Oh no, the water leaking through the floor. Actually, one class I said there's a mouse in the wall or something, and I was like, that I <laughs> stay away from that. Anyway. Um, so that helps them sort of find their spot. But using that idea of like the hotel or the apartment or whatever, it gets kids to figure out where things go on the ukulele and it helps me later on. So if I'm teaching a new chord, I might say, okay, take the second, second bell hop up to the top floor on the second room or whatever and it helps them sort of find their place. Fourth grade, or sorry, fifth grade, 
um, we at the beginning of the lesson we rehash where we've changed from ta's and takadimis to numbers so we do it take a second to do that um, we do some strumming to the rhythms um, just like fourth grade um, I let them choose whether they want to use ta's or ta -dies as I do a steady beat just like fourth grade then we do chord practice all the chords we remember from the previous year we sort of do some progressions and things and learn them there's C, F, G7, A minor, and those are the ones that we're really focusing on right now um, because our play-alongs utilize those songs. And so then the play-alongs we do that we've tried, we've done Best Day of My Life, which I shared about, um, we do Johnny Be Good, which is hilarious because the kids all know that song. They just, I mean, they don't really know how to play it yet, but they know the song, and so they do pretty good at that. Um, except for the G7, that's always tricky. Uh, we do Hound Dog by Elvis, another good one. And then if we have time in the lesson, I give them a challenge and I say, I want you to figure out Happy Birthday. It uses C and F and G7, and it starts with C. And so I'll write out the lyrics to Happy Birthday on the board and I'll like put a little circle or a little star or something where a chord change happens. And I have to have, I have them try to figure out where it goes. Happy birth, happy, happy birthday to me. How did I start that? Anyway. I don't know how I started that. Hold on. I'm in the wrong key. <laughs> anyway, I have kids start to figure that out. It's hilarious because they do eventually figure it out. And they do pretty good on that. But it's fun to see them try and work it out like I am apparently trying to work it out right now. <laughs> but anyway, it's fun to see them do that and it's fun, and they work in pairs to be like, oh wait, there's a chord. Can we? So it does a couple of things. It teaches them like a chord change is happening here. And then they have to think about relationships, what sounds right, what sounds okay, what sounds better. And so they get to do a little more of that. Anyway, so that's what we sort of do in fifth grade. The play-alongs are super fun. One of the things that I tell kids about play-alongs, because sometimes they go quick and they're they're too much as I say, oh, you know, um, and actually Dr. Reese told the story of her mom. Um, she's like, my, my mom wants to, um, wanted to learn ukulele. So I bought her ukulele and she comes to our ukulele class, but she can only play one chord. And so we'll do play alongs. And she'll say, this is actually the story she told at GMA. And this is what I tell to my students. And so she sits there and she'll play all the C's. And then when it switches, she'll just sit and watch until it gets back to the C. And I say to kids, you can do more than just C. You can do C and F, for sure. If you don't feel like you can get the G7 in there quick enough, for right now, leave it out. But play everything else. Otherwise, I have kids who are like sitting, fuddling, like behind the beat, always feeling like frustrated that they're not getting even close to it because they're so far behind. And that it's going too fast, I can't get anything. So I say, if you get frustrated, take a minute and just play the chords that you can play and switch more quickly. And then if you wanna give yourself a challenge, add in that chord that's tricky. And I don't feel like that's a cop out, I feel like it's like a chance for kids to do what they can do and then challenge themselves to move up later if they can do more. Anyway, that's what we're, that's what we're trying. Um, there are a thousand, and hundred thousand million play alongs on YouTube that you can use. Um, there are so many fun songs that are in our repertoire, like folk songs or simple songs they might have learned as kindergarten, first or second grade or whatever that only use two chords or three chords. And it's good ear training for kids to, to figure that out and figure out how uh, those chords go together. So it's, it's fun to be able to do that, even if they just know C, F, and G7. Um, and then from there, I will add in G, I'd add in A minor, I'd you know add in a couple more things, but um, that's sort of where we are right now. Okay, that's a quick rundown of everything we're doing right now. If you have questions about ukulele or anything else in the lesson plans, please leave questions down below or shoot me a message. I'll try and share more about ukulele because I know that's something we're all sort of struggling with. Like I said, I am not a ukulele master. This is my second year teaching it. Um, and I'm doing an after school group for the first time and I'm nervous about it. But um, I just wanted to share what we're doing and like where I'm getting the resources to, sh to, to help you all out because uh, and to help me out because when I share something, people are like, ooh, did you hear about this one? I'm like, no, please tell me more about it. And I feel like the more resources we get, the better it can be. So anyway, not a master, not a, not a, you know, ukulele prize fighter or anything. I'm just like 
working through it. So um, leave questions, leave comments. I'd love to get those um, and get your helpful feedback. And I will see you next week. Thanks so much for joining me tonight, everyone. Have a great night. Bye, Facebook. I appreciate you coming with me.